this video, we want to look at uh, the prevention of dengue, <clears throat> lab diagnosis of dengue and the treatment of uh, dengue. First of all, let's recap what we have seen so far. We started off with this uh, dengue virus. We saw that it is an RNA virus, arbovirus, flaviviridae, correct? Flaviviridae, it is a single-stranded RNA. It is mosquito transmitted. It is a hemorrhagic group of virus. It is The vector is Aedes aegypti, Aedes albopictus. It bites during the day. And this uh, virus can also, tr sorry, the Aedes mosquito can transmit the transfer the virus to its offsprings also. There are uh, five serotypes of uh, dengue virus, one, two, three, four, five. The two is very severe and uh, dengue five not in India. Okay, so serotype two is dangerous and this dengue uh, fever is uh, endemic in more than 100 countries, India also. The pathogenesis, there is something like Primary dengue infection and secondary dengue infection. Secondary dengue infection will be more dangerous because um, uh, it is dangerous and especially it is more dangerous if the serotype 1 comes first and then the serotype 2 comes to a person because serotype 2 is very, very dangerous, right? Okay, moving on. So how does our body react to these? Uh, it makes neutralizing antibodies which will protect us lifelong and non-neutralizing antibodies which are uh, produced against the non in the other type of serotypes. So what happens when uh, if a person gets a second attack of dengue from the different serotype, then what happens? These non-neutralizing antibodies which were formed during the first time, they bind to the uh, new serotype and they will actually protect it from our immune and it will be like devastating for us because our the antibodies that we ourselves made in the primary infection will lead to problem for us in the second infection. How many people are awake? Very tired. How many people are very hungry? Okay, please wake up. Let's finish this video and go for uh, eating something. Now, this is called as antibody dependent enhancement. In dengue, there is antibody dependent enhancement. The second attack actually would be very severe because our body would have produced antibodies which are going to help the virus in the second attack. Classification, old classification from uh, WHO we saw. Here we saw that uh, dengue fever, okay, there is dengue fever where there will be rashes on the chest, upper limb. Then there is dengue hemorrhagic fever, DHF. Are you able to see? Not at all, right? So dengue hemorrhagic fever is the second one. Here you can see that the platelet count will reduce and there will be a lot of hemorrhage. Dengue shock syndrome, in addition to dengue hemorrhagic fever, the person will have uh, shock symptoms like weak pulse, rapid pulse, narrow pulse pressure, hypotension. Then what else? Presence of cold and kami skin restlessness. Okay. Now let's move on to the new classification. Uh, this is dengue without and with signs of warning, warning signs and then you have severe dengue. How you classify? It's written here. Without, the person will have nausea, vomiting, rashes, uh, tourniquet test will be positive, uh, pain will be there, etc. With warning signs, you can see that the person has persistent vomiting. Here it was just vomiting, here it is persistent vomiting. Okay, persistent vomiting. Restlessness, liver is enlarged, etc. Let's mark those. Hold on. So pay attention here again. If you are uh, uh, sleeping, please wake up. See, <clears throat> vomiting, persistent vomiting. Okay, here tourniquet test is positive. Here they are saying mucosal bleed, etc. Restlessness, liver enlargement. There is increase in the hematocrit, but there is a rapid decrease in platelet count. These terms are probably important. Rapid decrease in platelet count. Okay. Now for severe dengue, then what are the uh, criteria? There will be respiratory distress, liver is affected, CNS is affected, heart is affected, there is severe bleeding, there is shock, obviously, right? Very good. Prevention, how do you prevent dengue? So dengue can be prevented with uh, mosquito control measures. You must have studied in community medicine how you will uh, uh, do mosquito control, environmental control, sanitation, water, piped water and um, etc. Spraying some insecticides. What else? Then 
protecting individuals like using mosquito net what else you know you can use some repellents mosquito repellents like you must have heard a lot of things on tv so many mosquito uh, control measures and vaccination this is still in trial stage so as of now we can't mention that moving on to lab diagnosis very important part of this video and important for exam also right okay so let us go to lab diagnosis so here it is very similar to uh, detection of other virus here you have ns1 antigen detection so ns1 antigen detection so you have uh, elisa and ict formats are available for detecting ns1 antigen in the serum so specimen you will collect this uh, serum Spe semen will be blood right serum this you will detect in serum using elisa ict right this has gained popularity because in the early stage itself you can detect now this detect this can be detected from day 1 of fever okay this can be detected from day 1 of fever okay and up to 18 days Is it clear guys? Then it is highly specific. It differentiates between the other viruses. It can also be specific to different dengue serotypes. So it is a very specific test. Okay. Now let us go to antibody detection. Now we are done with antigen detection. That's the NS1. So you have to remember these terms. NS1 is the actual antigen which you are detecting for dengue, correct? Antigen over, <clears throat> let's move to antibody. So you will detect the antibody. Here in primary infection, what happens and everything we have to see. I think it's time to take a deep breath again. What are we studying? Lab diagnosis of dengue. We have finished antigen detection, that is NS1 antigen detection. Now we are moving on to antibody detection. See, in primary infections, what happens, um, it's not very effective because the antibodies are slow and they don't show, uh, they give low titer, okay. T-I-T-R-E. Anyways, you can do IgM first, then you will get IgG. Coming to, see, IgM within 5 days, right? Within 5 days, you can get IgM, then you will get IgG. Coming to secondary infection, guys, are you able to see? In secondary infection, what happens, uh, we are here, right? Yeah, in secondary infection, you can, uh, IgM may be undetectable, but IgG gives rapid rising titer, okay? But the thing is, it react, cross-reacts with other uh, flabby virus like Japanese encephalitis and yellow fever, so it's not going to be specific, okay? Let's move on to past infection, how you will detect the antibody. So, low levels of um, IgG remain, remain detectable up to 60 years can you believe it's a little too much right nice okay that's why you know, they said it is lifelong protection from the first uh, serotype whatever infects you now moving on to mac elisa we are at what mac elisa this is also antibody detection this is recommended uh, tool Available currently for dengue infection. This is recommended and currently used. Recommended. And it is also very specific and sensitive. Okay, that's nice. So, Macalyzer, let's highlight. I like this because it's currently used. Okay. In secondary infection, IgG rapid titer, but it is uh, kind of mixing up with the other virus. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to rapid test. Uh, dipstick assays are also available. Okay. So let's mark this. They didn't say you can't use it. You can use it. So let's use rapid test dipstick assay. Okay. If I'm not wrong, even in malaria, we have seen this kind of rapid test. Correct. So this dipstick will tell you whether the antibody is present against uh, dengue. Now other antibody detection assays, please focus. We are looking at the other antibody detection assays. HAI, hemagglutination inhibition test. CFT is complement fixation test, uh, then you have neutralization test. This and all is not difficult, right? Agglutination inhibition test. 
complement fixation test, neutralization test. Now let's go to detection of the virus itself, not just the antigen or the antibody. You can detect the virus itself. So where is the virus? Please virus come down here. You can detect this guy. How will you detect? So dengue virus uh, you can detect from the blood itself. Okay, From first day itself you can detect uh, up to 5 days. Oh, only from first day, day 1 to day 5 in blood. Correct? So here the virus isolation can be done by inoculation into a mosquito cell line or mouse. Wow, you will virus isolate in mosquito cell line itself. Wow, or in mouse. Mouse though we have heard a lot. Mosquito cell line itself. Interesting word, no? Mosquito cell line itself, you can isolate the virus. Detection of specific gene obviously by PR. What is this? RT-PCR. So it is the most sensitive and specific assay and can be used for detection of serotype and quantification of viral load in body. So this is the most specific obviously. You can also do some serotype analysis probably. Right? Epidemiology also you can do because you are detecting the exact genes. Right? So let's uh, summarize the lab diagnosis. Lab diagnosis what and all we saw. You will collect the blood, take the serum, then you will detect the antigen. Which antigen you will detect? NS1. So how will you detect? By ELISA or ICT. This can be detected uh, from day 1 of fever. That is a nice thing for us. Then it is very specific. That is also a nice thing for us. ICT. What is ICT? It is immunochromatographic test. Okay. So all this will help you to detect the antigen. Then coming to antibody detection, you have in primary infection and secondary infection and past infection. Macalyza is recommended currently. Macalyza is in use. It's very sensitive, very specific. Rapid dipstick assay also is there. <coughs> Some other methods are there like uh, complement fixation test, hemagglutination inhibition test, neutralization test. You can write all those also. You can detect the virus itself. How do you detect the virus itself? If you want to detect the virus itself, you will have to use a uh, virus isolation. You can do in mosquito cell line and even in mouse. You can detect the specific viral RNA by real-time PCR. Nice, no? Now let's move on to treatment of dengue. There is no specific antiviral therapy because uh, virus usually is a self-limiting condition. So they cannot actually treat the virus. But symptomatic relief is given. Supportive care is given. So uh, plasma losses, you would have heard of platelet, uh, platelet transfusion, correct? Platelet transfusion, you will correct the electrolyte imbalance, metabolic imbalance. That's all. So we have covered dengue. Lab diagnosis, prevention and uh, Treatment we have finished. Okay. Just pay attention here. Hemorrhagic fever group. Uh, dengue virus is hemorrhagic fever. Yellow virus fever also hemorrhagic fever. Then you have Kyasanur forest disease virus. This also causes hemorrhagic fever. These all come under hemorrhagic fever group. But these two, na, yellow fever and dengue fever come under Flavi viride under arbovirus. Those are RNA viruses. Okay. There are many things that cause hemorrhagic fever. Dengue virus is one of them. So in this video, what and all did you study? What and all did you understand? Dengue, the virus and uh, uh, how it spreads through the Aedes, Egypti, right? Egypti, uh, mosquito. What else you saw? You saw that there is primary infection, there is secondary infection. Then, let's see, wait. The serotypes you saw. Then pathogenesis, how our body makes neutralizing antibodies and non-neutralizing antibodies. This ADE will actually be bad for us. Antibody dependent enhancement. Say, close your eyes and say what ADE is. ADE means antibody dependent enhancement. Yes. Okay, then dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, dengue shock syndrome. New classification, dengue without and with warning signs, severe dengue. Prevention of dengue. Lab diagnosis, very, very important for the exam, guys. 
pay attention to lab diagnosis. Then treatment. That's all for now. See you. Say bye. Bye-bye.